Hey guys, welcome to Coding Spur and welcome back to part 2 of this tutorial on how to code the classic Pong game. So, in the last video we managed to create our screen, we also create our ball class that let us create our ball object, and we create both paddles with our paddle class. In this video we are going to add movement to our ball and to both of our paddles, but it's important for you to know that we are not going to check for collisions yet. So the ball is not going to bounce when colliding with any wall or with any of the two paddles. But don't worry, we are going to do this in a future video, maybe next one. So yep, let's start coding. Okay, so let's start adding movement to our ball first. But actually, before we do that, let's go down here and let's create a variable called playing and let's set it equal to false let me put a comment variables and this variable is going to tell us if we are playing the game or in other words if the ball is moving now we want to go to our main loop and we want to check if the player presses the starting key in order to set this variable to true so go ahead and type if event dot type equals equals pi game dot key down dot key down and now we want to check what key did he pressed so go ahead and type if event dot key equals equals pi game dot k underscore and you can choose literally any key you want I'm gonna go with the letter P just because it stands for playing so P and inside of this if statement we want to set our playing variable to true okay let's now go to our ball class and inside of the init method we want to create two variables that are going to save our x and y velocity so i'm going to name them the x and the y and both are going to be equal to zero at the beginning so go ahead and type self dot dx equals zero and self dot dy equals zero so yeah, these two variables are basically going to tell us how is our ball moving in both x and y directions. Okay, let's now go ahead and create a method called start moving. We want to receive self as a parameter and we want to do the following. We want to set our dx variable to equal 15 and our dy variable to equal 5. And now let's go ahead and create a method called move is receiving self as a parameter and we want to do the following we want to set our position x to equal our position x plus our dx variable and our position y to equal our position y plus the dy variable so you can go ahead and leave it like this or you can go ahead and type self dot plus x plus equals self dot dx and self dot plus y plus equals self dot dy so it is exactly the same i'm gonna go with this because it's shorter but it is the same okay so i'm gonna quickly explain these two methods the start moving method is going to be called as soon as we press the starting key so in my case the letter p and it basically gives a starting velocity to our ball the move method is actually the one responsible of moving the ball so we're basically changing our x and y coordinates and then of moving the ball we can go ahead and show it and that will make the fact that the ball is moving okay let's now go ahead and call these three methods inside of our main loop so as I told you, as soon as we press the starting key, we want to start moving our ball, right? And we do that by typing the following. So you're gonna type the name of your ball object, in my case ball, then a dot, and then you're gonna call your start moving method. We now wanna go outside of this for loop and we wanna check if the playing variable is set to true. And we do that by typing if playing, and inside of this if statement, we want to move our ball. So let me put a comment here. Ball movement. 
and we want to do the following we want to type boulder move and then we want to show it so I'm gonna go ahead and save and run the file for you to see what happens okay so we have our screen and I'm gonna go ahead and press the starting key okay so as you can see our ball moves but it leaves a kind of trail along the way and we don't want that okay so to fix that is pretty easy we just need to call our paint back function so this function just before we move and show our ball so I'm gonna go ahead and save and run the file okay so I'm gonna go ahead and press the starting key and as you can see our ball moves and it doesn't leave a trail along the way uh, I know our paddles disappeared and that's because we are not showing them inside this if statement but we will fix that pretty easy by typing paddle1.show and paddle2.show let me put some comments here so paddle2 and paddle one so I'm gonna go ahead and save and run the file for you to see so I'm gonna go ahead and press the starting key and as you can see our paddles stay there and do not disappear okay guys so we can start adding some movement to our paddles and I want to start by declaring a new variable so go ahead and type self.state and we're gonna set it equal to the string stopped so this variable is gonna tell us if our paddle is going up down or neither okay so let's go ahead and create our move method we're going to receive self as a parameter and we want to check if our state so self.state is up in order to move our paddle up right so self dot plus y plus equals or you know what minus equals 10 because remember pygame coordinates work a little bit different so if we subtract a number we are going up and we want to do the same so if self dot state equals equals down we want to change our pos y by 10 units and again this is going to be positive because of the same reason okay now we want to go to our main loop and we want to type the following inside of this if statement so if event dot key equals equals pi game dot k underscore and I wanna I wanna explain you how I wanna do this so I wanna move the left paddle with the W the, the W key and the S key so W will make it go up and S will make it go down and I wanna move the right paddle with the up and down keys so let's start with the left paddle so key W we want to take our paddle one state and set it equal to up now we want to check if event key equals equals pi game dot k underscore s to set our paddle one state to be equal to down and now we want to do pretty much the same for our second paddle but with the up and down keys so go ahead and type if event dot key equals equals pi game dot k underscore up and we're gonna type paddle two dot state equals up now we want to do the same for our down key so if event dot key equals equals pi game dot k underscore down we want to type paddle two dot state equals down okay we now want to do one more thing before actually moving our paddles so we want to go outside of this if statement and we want to type the following so if event 
dot type equals equals pi game dot key up we want to set both paddles state to stop so paddle one state equals stopped and paddle two state equals stopped and we're basically just saying that if the player is not pressing the down key or the upper key or the S key or the W key or any key we want the both pedals to stop moving so yeah in other words that's what pygame.keyapp is it's basically a command that checks if we are not pressing any key okay we now want to go to this if statement and we want to do the following so before showing our pedals we want them to move so go ahead and type pedal one dot move and down here pedal two dot move and that's all i'm gonna save and run the file so remember that in order to move our pedals we need to press the starting key so i'm gonna go ahead and press it and try to move them so as you can see we can move both pedals and try to play with them so the left one should move with the W and S key and the right one should move with the upper and down key okay guys so I think that's all for this video in the next video we're going to start checking all kind of collisions so ball against walls paddles against walls and ball against paddles so if you're liking this tutorial if you enjoyed this video please 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 leave a like subscribe and comment and i'll see you in the next video